जय राधाम भार्वा कुंज विहारे जय राधाम भार्वा कुंज विहारे गोपी जनवा गेरी भार धीर गोपी हाय गोपी जनवा गेरी भार गोपी सौरनंदन भज जन हंजनाय जसौरनंदन भज जन हंजनाय जमून थेरा जमून तेरा चाहमून तीर हम भार भान कुंज भी हे है कुंज कुंज विहा गोपी जनवा गेरी भार हे जय गोपी जन हे गेरी भार सौरनंदन भज जन हंजनायसौरनंदन भज जन हंजनायमून तेरा भार छमून यमून थेरा यमून हिंझायम हुंज बिहा हे हम भार भा कुंज विहा हे हे ध्याय गोपी जनवा गेरी भर धा हे गोपी जन गोपी जनवा गेरी भर धा गोपी जन सौरनंदन भज जन हंझ 
सौर नंदन भजन सौर नंदन ध्वजन झुमूर थीरा झुमून थीरा झमून थीर हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम हम राम राम हरे हरे हा कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे हरे को हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हम कृष्ण कृष्ण घर हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे हम थाई घोर हरे भौ हरे भौन घोर हरे भौन थाय घर हरे भरे भौ हरे भौन थाय घर हरे भाय ध्याय प्रभु प्रभु भार प्रभु भान ध्याय ध्याय प्रभु भार शील प्रभु पाद की जय हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय गोर प्रेम नंदे हरि हरि बो ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाया श्रीमद् भागवतम एथ कैंटो 
15th chapter, Bali Maharaj conquers the heavenly planets, text 35 and also 36. Tatas tat anu bhavenaha Bhuvanatraya visrutam Kirtim dikshu vitan vanaha vana Sareja udaradiva Tatas tat anu bhavenaha Bhuvanatraya Vistrutam Kuttam Dikshu Vitanavana Sareja Uda Udu Radiva Tatastat Anu Bhavenaha Bhuvanatraya Vistrutam Kritim Dikshu Vitavana Sareja Udarariva Ladies. <laughs> Tata, thereafter. Tat Anubhavena. Because of performing such great sacrifices, Bhuvanatraya, throughout the three worlds, Vishrutam, celebrated, Kirtim, reputation, Diksu, in all directions. Vitan Vanaha. Spreading. Sa. He. Bali Maharaj. Reje. Became effulgent. Udarat. The moon. Eva. Like. So Bali Maharaj has just conquered the heavenly planets and now he's performed sacrifices as recommended by the brahmanas as for made yagyas now he is in a, in a glorious position when bali maharaj performed his sacrifice he gained a great reputation in all directions throughout the three worlds thus he's shown in his position like the brilliant moon in the sky verse number 30 Six, which is the final verse in the chapter. Bhubu jesa sriyam sridyam dvija devo palambitam krita kritam ivatmanam 
Manyamano Mahatmanaha. Because of the favor of the Brahmanas, the great soul Bali Maharaj, thinking himself very satisfied, became very opulent and prosperous, prosperous, and began to enjoy the kingdom. Srila Prabhupada's purport. <clears throat> the Brahmanas are called Dvija Deva, the Kshatriyas are generally called Narada. The word Deva actually refers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Brahmins guide human society becoming happy by satisfying Lord Vishnu. And according to their advice, the Kshatriyas, who are called Narada, keep law and order so that other people, namely the Vaishyas and Sudras, may promptly follow regulative principles. In this way, people are gradually elevated to Krishna consciousness. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 8th canto, 15th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, Bali Maharaj Conquers the Heavenly Planets. Om Magyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhaktivedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deva Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pastyatya Desatarine Panchakalpa Tirubhischa Kripa Sindhu Vebhacha Paditanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. Bali is now in a glorious position, conquered the heavenly planets, the demigods have left because the power of Brahm Bali was so strong that they couldn't even begin to stand up against them. So on the advice of Prehaspati, they simply departed the heavenly planets. And now he's being favored by the Brahmanas. So one is favored by the Brahmanas, one is favored by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> so that is the understanding. To get Brahminical favor are those who are actually Brahmanas, those who are qualified. What is a Brahmana? Brahmana has six activities. Patam, Patan, Yajan, Yajan, Dana, Pratigraha. Patan, patan, means to know the Vedic scriptures and to be able to systematically teach those scriptures. Yajan Yajan means to worship the Supreme Lord in his form as a deity and be able to guide others in the worship. And Dana Pratigraha means that they accept charity and they also give charity. They accept charity only to give charity, generally because the Brahmins live very simply and we don't, do not require gorgeous amounts of arrangements. So, um, just like when Prithu Maharaj, when he uh, uh, wanted to reward the Brahmanas, he gave them so much gold and so much treasure that they said, what are we going to do with all this? So they didn't know what to do with it. They had all of this treasure that was given to them. You know, because they figured, well, it's nice, but it's not. we're not able to utilize it. So they gave it all away. In fact, they didn't even accept it. They just left it. <laughs> it was just too much. So when the Brahmins are, are favored and pleased and Everything is nice. <laughs> and here, because of the favor of the Brahmins, everything that Bali attempted became glorious. His kingdom, now he's the king of heaven. He's actually the king of the entire three worlds. He has usurped all the power, all of the territories that cover the three worlds. The demigods are the official and righteous controllers of the material energy under the guidance of Krishna. But they no longer had any position. Bali had thrown them all out by his prowess. And now he became the proprietor and controller of everything. 
Now he's enjoying the kingdom. And you'll go on to see how there's plans to usurp his position. Whenever the demons get in control, then there's a plan by the David and by the godly to extract the demons out of the control, just like today. The demons are in control pretty much everywhere. <laughs> Society is so demoniac now that it's just impossible to sort out anything. It's become so demoniac. Uh, so, but the Supreme Lord has his plan to uproot the demons' plans. The demons' plans never become completely successful, although they try. <laughs> Sometimes they gain some success, like here, Bali will occupy the throne for a while, and then the Lord will come and take everything away. In the same way, this is a feature throughout history, the demons become prominent and powerful. Sometimes the demigods are powerful, sometimes the demons are powerful, sometimes the yakshas and rakshashas are, are powerful. It depends what mode of nature is most prominent. As it explains in the seventh canto, when the mode of goodness is prominent, the demigods are prominent, and everything, people are prosperous, and life, it goes on nice. People are generally pious, and religious activities go on. All kinds of philanthropical, charitable organizations establish uh, equality throughout the world. And all under the direction of the Supreme Lord through the demigods. But when the demons become powerful, they just try to control everything and try to uh, put, suppress anybody who is against their control. And then um, the world becomes hellish. And when the yakshas and rakshastras become in control, then, then uh, there's no hope for anybody. <laughs> They just, they're just barbarians. The demons are more sophisticated. If like today, Prabhupada said the demons today, they wear suit and tie, they look like nice fellows. <laughs> but they're demons. <laughs> you see them on the street, and you can't tell because they look like everybody else. But they're, but they're, they're just full of demoniac plans and demoniac nature. So Bali, Bali is a nice demon. He's a sophisticated demon. The demons nowadays, they have no sophistications. The only thing they about their sophistication is they can dress nicely, that's all. <laughs> but Bali, he, was, he knew the Vedas. He actually knew the Vedas and he understood how to use the Vedas in order to gain power because the Vedic knowledge is there. Anybody who can understand Veda, even the demons, they can use the Vedas for gaining power. And so it says this knowledge is dangerous in the hands of the wrong people. It's dangerous in the hands of the wrong people. Here we're also hearing about the, nat the natural order of society. Prabhupada speaks about the Vanashram system, at least the Varnas anyway. The, the Dwijabhana Devas, the Kshatriyas, the Vaishyas, and the Sudras. The two higher classes, the Brahmins and the Kshatriyas, are meant to give organization and control within the society so everyone else can flourish nicely. The Brahmins give both transcendental and practical knowledge, and the Kshatriyas work under the guidance of the Brahmins, taking advice from them, and organize society accordingly. Brahmins speak on basis of Shastra, and the, 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 the Vaishyas follow very carefully how to maintain, because there is Dhanar Veda, and there, all the Vedas actually just deal with various aspects of society and how to organize society ideally. And so the Brahmins, they know that, and they give that advice. They see a situation, they understand it carefully, and then they give their advice. And the Kshatriyas, after understanding, they ask questions and get everything in place, and then they rule accordingly. That's the Kshatriyas. So you, you need both. 
if you have Brahminic, you have a, a Brahminical society, but you don't have a solid Kshatriya organized society, then nothing gets done, <laughs> or very little gets done. Um, just like Prabhupada developed our society in a Brahminical way, he emphasized Brahminical tejas or Brahminical knowledge. But then later on, he wanted to establish the uh, the other orders, the Kshatriyas and the Vaishnas, in order to complete the arrangement for uh, organization of our society, and then being that as a practical prototype, that would be the example for the rest of the world. But we haven't really filtered down into the other areas yet, because without the, without the Kshatriyas, or very clear management and organizational and protectional feature of society, things don't go on. Um, I read in one book written by Purnachandra Prabhu. Of course, you remember you remember Purnachandra. Maybe some of you are. He wrote very. He wrote a whole book, really about about our society, and he talked a lot about Brahmins and Vaishnas, uh, Kshatriyas. And he gave a nice example how when the Kshatriyas are really not in place, things don't really develop. The Brahmins are very philosophical, and they can also see how the things are done, but they don't do it. <laughs> they just don't get involved in it. They'll give advice, and then sometimes in emergencies they get involved, just like um, we had we had Asvatama and his father, you know, Dronacharya. They were uh, they were Brahmins, but they fought in the war as Kshatriyas because it was needed, it was an emergency. So sometimes the uh, Brahmins out of emergency will take the position of another Varna in order to help with that emergency situation. But generally they don't get involved. So the example that was in the book was, if you come to me and you say, Maharaj, uh, can I have a nice glass of hot milk, Jai Panchatattva Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. If I, you come to me and you say, give me a glass of hot milk, and I say, well, you walk down the road a little ways, and after a while you turn right and you'll see a barn. And in the barn there's a cow. And you get your bucket, and you can get your milk. That's organization, right? <laughs> no, that's not organization. If you come to me and you say, give me a glass of milk, and then I hand you the, the glass of milk as prepared by someone, then everything is nice. So this, this, this example kind of illustrates how when there is not good organization, although there is good intelligence, things don't really move properly. So there has to be that balance, the Kshatriyas and the Brahmanas. And the Brahmins give advice and also make corrections when it's needed. And the uh, Kshatriyas, they have three principles. They protect those underneath them, who they're governing, and they also give charity, and they establish different features of the society so people can get whatever they need. And um, uh, they also, there's one more, protection, welfare, and uh, there's one, P. Oh, oh yeah, and then they know how to organize things. Mm -hmm. When you see, some, just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada had, was struggling with his society when he was developing it because there weren't too many devotees who had organizational talents. And uh, so, but one, the one devotee appeared, his name was Karandar. And he became Prabhupada's manager, and he was able to organize things really expertly. 
And Prabhupada really appreciated that. And then things start going on because Prabhupada was doing the organization himself because no one else could do it properly. <laughs> so, um, therefore, in training, we need to train both Brahmins and the Kshatriyas. And Vaishyas also need education and training. But Sudras, they simply assist. They can also have their own activities, but they, also, they mostly assist in helping the three other classes. So in Prabhupada's plan for establishing our society, he said we need to establish Van Ashram College. And there's a plan underway right now to establish one in Mayapur, a very grand plan, so I think it's going to work. It looks pretty good. So this Van Ashram College is so much needed, but Prabhupada said every temple, or at least every yatra, should have Van Ashram College. And maybe every country can have one college. What is the Van Ashram College is that the Brahmins, they are skilled in different types of services. They can do any service, doesn't matter. But they, they act as teachers rather than doers. Just like Prabhupada taught us how to wash the floor. Isn't that interesting? Srila Prabhupada taught us how to wash the floor. He got down on his own hands and knees and showed us how to mop the floor. And I've seen devotees in some temples, they can't wash the floor. They take a mop and they push it this way and that way and the dirt goes that side and then they push it back that way and they push it that way and they push it that way. They take the mop and squeeze it out and the floor's still got the dirt on it when it dries. It looks wet because, they think, oh, must be clean because it's wet. It's not. <laughs> when it dries, you see all the dirt is still there. Because they use these mops. <laughs> and Prabhupada never liked those things. So he taught us how, how to wash the floor. And he got down with a bucket, and two buckets. And one bucket, and he had to, he uh, washed, put the rag in there, washed the floor, and then he put his thing back in the other bucket and squeezed it out in the other bucket till the rag was completely dry, and then he dried that floor where he washed. Then he went on to the next section. And when the floor is done, it's clean. <laughs> There's no dirt left. <laughs> Little science on how to wash floors. <laughs> So I taught that to uh, Bhakti Vatsal Nittai, and he's expert now. He's become really good at it. So if you want to get some advice, he's, he knows how to wash the floor. Otherwise, <laughs> people just take a rag and they push dirt this side and push it that side and push it this way. And you hope that the rag catches it, which it doesn't. It catches some of it. <laughs> That's about it. So I'm just using that as an example how, um, you know, Prabhupada, was, he said, I am not a floor mopper, that's what he said, but I'm teaching you, and this is the job of the Brahmins, the Brahmins are meant to know each and every skill that is required within the temple, so they can teach, they can teach deity worship, they can also teach how to fight, kshatriya, they can teach everything, not individually, but collectively. Collectively means the collective Brahmanical uh, group knows all of the activities in a collective way. Not that everyone knows everything. <laughs> no. And then Prabhupada said, in, in that way we can establish a perfect organization in our society where the Brahmins are teaching. Once you get the knowledge, then the Kshatriyas carry out their duty, the Vaishyas carry out their duties, the Sudras carry out their duty with the Brahmins giving advice. So this is, this is the ideal society. And this is what's still lacking in our society yet. We're still we're working on it, but it's going quite slow. And when you have that, you'll see how things really work nicely. I mean, everything is smooth. The deities are worshipped so nicely. The devotees get everything they need. Things go on. Preaching goes on. The organization becomes fine. Prabhupada said we are highly organized. Sometimes we make a joke. 
not a joke, actually. We preach to people and we say, uh, you know, we get them and try to get them involved. And they say, well, I'm not interested in organized religion. We say, don't worry, the Hare Krishnas are not organized. <laughs> Yeah, we tell them that. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Maybe that's something for me then. <laughs> so, yeah, well, Prabhupada made that point that this is essential. So he taught Brahminical uh, direction, but he wanted us to fill in. He said, fill in what I have given you. And that was to set up this Daibhi Van Ashram system where each and every person... Uh, has a particular service in line with all of the service that are needed, and each person is expert at that service. <laughs> yeah, and then they develop expertise, but they actually, and some of them become expert quite a way. And but it requires education, and training. So the Van Ashram College was part of Srila Prabhupada's plan for establishing Daivi Van Ashram within our society. And when you, when you do that, you'll see whatever efforts you make in any direction has maximum results. Maximum results. When organization is there. Because the service is there, but when everything is done according to the proper way how to do it, with the intelligence on how to increase it and make it nice. Like, I don't want to criticize, but I noticed there was one, one devotee here was cooking here. He was cooking for the deities. And then they would bring the Maha Prashadam to me to give to Haridas. And I would look at it and I'd say, what is this? <laughs> he doesn't want to cook. <laughs> He doesn't have he doesn't have any desire to do anything. Just looking at it, you can tell all he wanted to do was run into the kitchen and run out as fast as he could. <laughs> so you can see just and, and this went on for a while, and then you know I complained. So when we have that attitude, just let let me get through the service so I can get on get on to what I really want to do, you know. And then that's, uh, then Krishna's not there. Krishna's accepting our service when we put our attention, mind, quality, and everything we do in our chanting, in our understanding of scriptures when we read, very carefully doing everything with complete attention. And this is Krishna consciousness. Um, yeah, and just like. You know, Harinam, we go out on Harinam, but the more you organize it, the more you fine-tune it, the more you think of ways to increase the quality of it, you'll see the power of that Harinam will be so great, even if there's only a few devotees, it'll have such an effect. When everyone is working according to, you know, the group, and at the same time knows exactly what to do. <laughs> like that, that's like that. So uh, this has to still be developed in our society, but I mean, we have a large society, it's worldwide, and it's slowly becoming. Um, there are devotees who are working on Van Ashram College right now. So the, then, then you, you know, when you take prasadam, you, get, you don't get prasadam, you get something from the spiritual world. <laughs> the cooking is so expert. And everything is done in first class, you know. That's how Prabhupada wanted everything first class. <laughs> first class. So, and of course, I, I'm not so first class, so I'm still working on it. But I understand the need for it, that's for sure. <laughs> but putting your attention, heart, and complete as much devotion as you can access in whatever you do gives the, uh, gives the presentation a satisfaction when you offer it. When you do your best, even if your best is not perfect, if you try your best in anything you do, and you're guided by higher intelligence, in other words, practical understanding, there's a, there's a certain way to wor worship the deity. 
there's varieties of ways to worship the deity, but there is ways not to worship the deity. <laughs> we have to avoid that. There's, a, there's ways to, it's like Srila Prabhupada when he would cook in the kitchen. When he would be finished, sometimes he'd go in and cook the whole offering for the deity. When he'd be finished, the counters were clean, the place was just as clean as it was when he came in. And if it wasn't clean when he came in, he would have it clean first, and then he'd start cooking. And then when he was done, it wasn't like, oh no, who's going to clean up? <laughs> it wasn't like that. He could c cook and clean at the same time. That was Prabhupada. Of course, he was expert at doing that. But he also taught the, the science on how to do everything in a Krishna conscious way. So when the, um, the Brahmins are there as teachers, the Kshatriyas are doers, the Vaishyas work under the guidance and provide whatever people need. And the, and the Sudras, they assist in so many different ways. Then the Prabhupada said, in this way, people are gradually elevated to Krishna consciousness. So Vanashram is not is material, but it's necessary. It's material, but it's necessary. And when it's used in Krishna consciousness, it becomes transcendental. Then it becomes spiritual. But it has to be organized. When Prabhupada first started the movement, he was. He knew he didn't have much time. His health was very, what we say, tenuous. It was very critical. So Prabhupada was trying to establish the movement as fast as he could. And so he wasn't into training devotees at that stage. He was just engaging devotees accordingly. But after, in 1974, he, he started, he changed the whole whole perception of how he organized the site. He says, now we have to establish this Vanarsha. He says, the world is in chaos. <clears throat> and he meant within our society, the Daivi Vanarsha. And then he spoke many lectures, giving, outlining exactly how everything should be done. And some places are actually doing it. Others are still working on it. And others don't even care about it. <laughs> and that the fastest way to lose people is just to give anybody any service. Yeah. Okay. We need you to. Uh, we need you to take out the garbage. Yes, but um, you know I've been studying. I could give classes. You know. Well. You work up to that. Take out some garbage for a while and then... <laughs> of course, that's good training for humility. Like we had one devotee. We all know him. His name was Sadaputa. He was a scientist. He had this very scientific mind and he, 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 he studied Srila Prabhupada's books. And he understood from a scientific point of view, you know, how to, to explain you know, the cosmic, the cosmological arrangements. And so he came to New Vrindavan. I was there, 1973, 74. And uh, they put him in the field to dig holes in the ground so they could make posts for cows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and so... Um, he was a Ph.D., you know, he had a Ph.D. And so, um, and he was digging holes, putting posts in there for, to make fences for the cows. So someone said to the, the leader of the community, you know, this person, he's a Ph.D. And the leader of the community said, yes, Ph.D., post hole digger. <laughs> <laughs> So that was the re that was the end of that, you know. <laughs> we didn't need any PhDs. We needed people to work in the fields because we had cows. We were on a farm, and we needed, you know, kind of farm. But he came and anyway. But of course, he didn't stay. <laughs> 
And you'll see in our temples, when devotees are not properly engaged, uh, then after some time they leave. Or they go out and get a job and think it's better. Or, and then they come on Sunday <laughs> for the Sunday feast. Because the people are not engaged according to their nature. So that, that's, that is the es essential principle of the Van Ashram College. To evaluate, to educate, and then to engage people accordingly. And when we do that, then just like we have our Janava here, she's an intellectual. And she, she writes, and she can speak, she can also, of course she speaks Italian. <laughs> if you want to learn Italian. <laughs> but she's very sharp in philosophical knowledge. And then she's also written stuff also like that. But what is she doing? She's just, you know, what are you doing, cutting vegetables? <laughs> That's about it. But we're not using that that knowledge in a in a in a you know Krishna conscious way. So you know if I tell you know uh, Nanda Vardhana, you know Nanda Vardhana, um, your your job is to uh, uh, he could do anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> He, he can cook. He can. He's also a kshatriya. He's a fighter and a good cook. So I don't know how you blend those two together. But <laughs> <laughs> and we have our Rathiatra over there. He's an expert architect. But how much architecture are you doing for the, <laughs> the devotees? <laughs> So yeah, we need to use people's abilities and talents in that way for to spread Krishna consciousness like that. Like that. So that requires more and more organization and fine tuning the management like that. It's here it's pretty good or the organization here is quite good, but it can always improve. <laughs> and it can always improve like that. Um, yeah, so that's the, that. That's what Prabhupada is saying here. The Brahmins, they guide the Kshatriyas. The Kshatriyas know how to manage, organize, and protect. Them. And they support the Vaishyas and the Sudras and making sure they get everything they need to do their service and society goes on. And then we can engage in spiritual activities as part of you know the services we do. Because what service you do is really the most part, most the time you spend most of the day at, like that. What well, devotees are surrendered, they'll do whatever they are asked to do, and that's that's good. Now, of course, on the highest level, if you're in, in Krishna consciousness and you're in your advance, you can do any service, and it doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect you, and you'll be able to do that service nicely. But not everyone's on that highest level. And therefore, this, this system of organization helps people move forward and opening up their abilities at the same time using those abilities as a way to serve the Supreme Lord and bringing more and more, uh, what we say, expertise in everything we do. And Prabhupada was very strong on it. Everything should be done first class. First class. So, uh, yeah. We try to do that. Okay, so I won't take too much more time. Any questions? Comments? The Banachram College? Yeah. Oh. Well, it depends what what's being taught. <laughs> We're teaching varnas. We're not teaching ashrams. We're teaching. We're also teaching people how what are the principles of ashram, but mostly it's about varna. So depending on what 
particular skill or service you're taught, it'll take that much time. And that, that has to be designated yet. It's not something that we can just say, well, it's going to be this much time. It's, that has to be organized and designated. And so a curriculum has to be set up in order for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gurukul. Gurukul is the foundation, and then Gurukul is is some, uh, somewhat similar to that, but Gurukul is more more broader, teaching many many different things to to the same person. This is very streamlined. You come into the Vaishnavism College and you're taught a particular seva how to do it expertly. And you're also taught spiritual principles also. Blending these two together is the perfection of Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada tried to do it but he, he, he had so many things to do. He was traveling, preaching. He also was writing, translating the, the Bhagavatam. He was managing some different levels. But he came up with this Van Ashram College. It was Prabhupada's idea, this Van Ashram College. And Radhadesh in Belgium, they did it for a while. I'm not sure exactly how it went on. You can speak to uh, Yadu Nandana Maharaj. He was the president of the college for a while. But things were going on quite good. Yes. About how our children can be trained nicely right from the very beginning so that they are able to use their propensities nicely to serve uh, Krishna. Now, I know personally some Gurukuli boys who had very nice training in Mayapur and then they became young adults. They went back to America and they said, now I have to get a job because I want to get married and I need money. Well, they're not in, they, they got the training but they didn't get the engagements. They didn't get the service. That's the second part, to train and then to engage people in the different programs that we have. Because the training doesn't really give you enough. You have to apply that knowledge in a practical way and then it comes out. Prabhupada would always use the example, the doctor, he goes to school for so many years and he has so much knowledge of medicine, but unless he and then he has to work as a doctor to be actually called a doctor. Mm -hmm. Same way. So many of them didn't. Maybe they did for a while, but didn't or didn't actually come to that standard. So it requires, you know. I mean, Bhakti Vidya Purnamaraj is doing it in in Mayapur. He's doing it with the Gurukul. Training them, engaging them, yeah. <laughs> so will they be able to manage their lives? Will they be able to sustain themselves? Will they be able to have the Griyast Ashram, which they want? With Prabhupada's the program was to make sure that everything we need, just like getting a job, what do you mean to get a job? Getting a job means I'm preparing for Grihasta Ashram, or married life. So that's another feature of the Van Ashram system, is to provide opportunities for people to get married <laughs> where they don't have to go out and somehow or other you know get a job and then search around for a partner they're doing that in the Chalpati temple if you need money you can get it if you need health you can get it if you need a job the devotees help you get that if you need a husband or a wife there's a program for that. So they have, they've covered all aspects. That, yeah. Mm. Like that. That is very nice. Yeah. But we think, well, it's like I need a husband or a wife, then 
what do I do? I just look around the ashram. <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> that pollutes the whole env environment. <laughs> uh, so um, everything should be systematically organized. So, where, as Radhanath Swami said, we want to make sure that each devotee has everything they need to practice Krishna consciousness for their entire life. Mm. That means even when they're old, they get support. Mm. Not that they have to and they just go in a corner and somehow or other become like a vegetable. We can't do much. Mm. So that these are all part of Prabhupada's plan for developing the, the society. Organ and we have to take care of each and every devotee, hundred mm. percent. Mm -hmm. So whatever the devotees need, and the devotees should be surrendered. And the leaders should be organized. <laughs> Prabhupada said that the, the devotees should be completely obedient to the leaders and the leaders should be complete, should show affection for the devotees. In mm. other words, there's a genuine caring for each and every devotee on how they get whatever they need to become not only Krishna conscious but to take care of their material needs also. Mm. Yeah. Instead of going outside into the secular world to fulfill these needs. I have another question, if I may. I is that okay? Yeah, is it related to the first one? Mm -hmm. So, we are so mixed up in this age of Kali, you know. We are not pure Brahmanas or pure Kshatriyas. We are all mixed up. That's where the Vanashram College comes in. It, it's an evaluation system along with an education system. Mm -hmm. And the evaluation, as Prabhupada mentions, must be done by the, the Guru. The Guru can see, or is meant to see, and understand the disciples and see how they're the best to engage them. And they work along with the temple leaders to uh, engage their disciples. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, so evaluation has to be there. <laughs> Just like I know in one temple, there are pujaris there, but they're all kshatriyas, most of them. And what happens? They always fight on how to do things. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. No, it should be done this way. No, it should be done that way. No, it should be done that way. The Brahmins will give the advice, the kshatriyas. If you leave a kshatriya by himself, he's going to do it the way he wants, because that's his nature. <laughs> he's not going to take advice. He's got the vision. <laughs> so each kshatriya has to have their own little kingdom. <laughs> But we have to train people because Kalo Sudra Sambhavan, people in this age are not born into their varnas. The varnas are, have to be uh, awakened through the process of evaluation and training. Like that. Just like Prabhupada was talking to one Gurukul teacher, and he was telling how, you know, Gurukul, this was in India, one boy in the class, he would just disturb the whole class. He wasn't interested in learning, he was more or less interested in just disturbing the whole class. And, and they would try to reprimand him and help him to learn, but he could never, he never showed any interest for learning the subject matters. So when they told Prabhupada, Prabhupada said he's not meant to be there. Take him and put him out in the, you know, let, let him work in the fields. Give him some practical service to do. He's not meant, meant for education. So, yeah, you'll see there are persons like that. They're just not meant to receive philosophical education. They're more good at doing particular skills in a practical way. And then they'll grow. When they grow in that area, then after some time they'll learn more about the philosophy. And so instead of trying to 
bring it bring it in through the Brahminical side, we bring it in through the practical engagement side. <laughs> no, there's where the evaluation program has to be. Somebody has to, uh, people have to see how best to engage. I mean, Prabhupada saw that with some of his devotees. Some of his devotees were not inclined to the philosophy or even to chanting. So he gauged them in devotional activities. But he always encouraged them to take up the other points. But they were, some of them were really good at getting things done expertly, you know. I don't want to mention any names, but um, if you study, the, you see the history of our society, there were devotees that could do tremendous amounts of wonderful service, but they weren't so much fixed in the philosophy or even in the chanting. But as they became more and more engaged in other things, then they got more and more interested in the philosophy, and that, that came later. So you don't always bring people in through chanting, and you bring them in through service. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone has their personality, everyone has their nature, mm -hmm. and just to amalgamate everyone and say everyone can do anything is it doesn't work. <laughs> any other questions? Udava, you have any questions today? Okay. Okay, so we stop here. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai.